Hi, everyone. My name is Blake Cadwell. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Soundly.com, and I'm joined today by Dr. Amy Sorrow. And I'm really looking forward to this conversation today because we're going to talk about hearing aid technology levels. Um, I'm a hearing aid wearer, and I, when I first went down the process of, of finding a pair of hearing aids, this is one of the things that really confused me. Um, you know, each hearing aid brand has three or four technology levels that typically go up in price. So for example, I wear Resound Omnia most days and Resound Omnia is offered at Omnia 5, Omnia 7, and Omnia 9. Each one is a little bit more expensive uh, than the last and has some higher tech. But as a, as a person just getting going in my hearing aid search, it was very difficult for me to understand truly what the differences uh, were between these technologies. So Dr. Amy, I'm happy to have you here and excited to hear your take on hearing aid tech and, and how people should think about this. So maybe you can just give us some background. What are some of the big things that, that distinguish the sort of bottom level and the top level of hearing aid technology? Definitely. So the there are three main categories that are different between the levels of technology. So the first thing is the amount of background noise support you're going to get. That will differ depending on which level of technology, whether it's standard, advanced, or premium levels of technology. And then how detailed or how finely the audiologist is able to adjust the frequencies to match your audiogram. Um, so Think of it kind of like if you're in a recording studio or where you've seen those sliders that you can move up and down, there's just more of them to work mm. with. So gives you a little bit more customization options. And then the third thing would be features. And these will differ depending on the hearing aid manufacturer. So for example, um, with Phonak, if you had a standard level of technology, it's not going to include that tap feature, or you can use that to answer a phone call. Um, and then for Resound, for example, there's another feature in the premium where you can really zero in on what someone is saying. So those are the, the three main differences. The way that hearing aid manufacturers design the hearing aids is at the premium level. And so that's kind of the way that it was intended um, to be used. And then to help with budget, um, they've pared down some of those features so that you know it's more, more affordable for some people, more accessible. And with that, we'll get into more of the specifics about all of this, but the most important thing about a hearing aid is that it is fit correctly for your, your ear and for your hearing loss. Um, so audibility is the, the most important factor in all of this. That makes sense. It's really helpful to hear about these sort of three big categories, background noise management, precision and programming and special features. So let's let's go into each of these a little bit more and understand what's really happening sort of behind the scenes between the sort of base and the most premium uh, technology level. So let's start with uh, with background noise. Um, what does it really mean when you're saying a, a more premium hearing aid gives you more support in background noise? How does that actually play out? So from what we know with research, the amount of support that you're going to be getting in background noise is more of a comfort thing than it is necessarily, you know, it's going to be the speech will be that much clearer for you. Um, generally speaking, so in more challenging listening environments, a premium hearing aid just has more options. It's going to take a look at your environment and, and try to uh, match it with a setting that's going to give you the most comfortable or best way to um, reduce the background noise. So some examples of in the premium settings that you might get, so an, an echo in a car or in a room, um, maybe in a loud environment versus in a soft environment or a quieter environment, it's going to have different um, approaches to how it attacks that, that background noise versus something that's more, let's say in the standard level of technology, it will have a setting for quiet and then it'll turn on some background noise help, but it won't be quite as sophisticated in the way that it goes at those certain scenarios. That makes sense. And it was interesting for me to learn um, as we've kind of worked on this this type of, of topic uh, for Soundly.com, it's interesting for me to learn that most of the difference comes down to comfort, which you just said, versus audibility, meaning that if you're hearing a lot of background noise and it's not being kind of suppressed or managed with a less premium device, you're probably understanding speech just as well, but you have this sort of 
irritation or distraction potentially of, of background noise, of an echo, of wind noise. Um, and so you're just getting more comfort at these premium technology levels. I know from experience, um, I can tell the difference, and often it is really in that in that comfort um, that I get from suppressed background noise or managed um, background noise. So let's move to the second category, which is precision in programming. Um, can you tell us, you, you gave us a nice analogy of the recording studio, but can you tell us a little bit more about what the precision in programming really comes down to? How, how does that actually work, and, and how big of a deal is that for someone who's shopping for hearing aids? So it does depend on the person's hearing loss. Now, I'll give you an example where I would say it's more important. Um, so if somebody has, let's say, a unilateral hearing loss or an asymmetric hearing loss, let's say, um, where we're really relying more on one ear, we need to give that ear really the, the best possible acoustic information so that you're able to understand as well as possible. I've just seen for, for that particular person, it does make a difference. Or if we have like a bi-cross um, where we're, we're really relying on that one ear, um, we mm. want to get that as, as best as we can. Um, so another example might be somebody who is a little more discerning, um, maybe somebody who likes music or other things like sound. Um, we want to really be able to customize and offer them the best experience possible um, for their hearing loss. So those are some scenarios where I would say it matters a bit more for that particular person, um, but it just gives you more tools in your, your toolbox as an audiologist so that I know that um, we have some options to help this person if they're, if they're wanting some adjustments or, or something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. And for, for anyone who's just learning about the world of kind of hearing loss and hearing aids, you know, every person has sort of a hearing chart, which comes with your audiogram. And, you know, I think the process Dr. Amy's describing is matching the exact program of that hearing aid to amplify exactly your prescriptive target, uh, whatever that might be, um, and to kind of matching that line as, as perfectly as possible. And, and it's from, from what I understand, a more premium hearing aid gives you lots more little adjustment points along the way. So you can make that, that really precise and um, specific. So that's, that's uh, kind of the second category. And then the third category is special features. And I'll say, this is the part that confused me less, right? Because you can actually read about them and you can understand uh, whether a, a premium technology level has a feature or it doesn't have a feature. Um, even so, let's talk about special features and maybe you gave a couple uh, examples earlier, but maybe you can talk a little bit more about some of the special features that are available at premium levels and not so not available on uh, more budget options. Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, so with um, GN Resound in that premium level of technology, they offer a feature which is not available on the standard or advanced level of technology. So you have to get the premium product for this. Um, but there is a designated program that you can have, um, which is the ultra focus or front focus, um, where you're really zeroing in on the person in front of you and it's cutting out the background noise around you. So let's say you're in a noisy restaurant and, you know, that's a, a really frustrating situation for you. That's going to be the best possible scenario um, in a hearing aid to help you. So you would be able to access that program by pushing a button or using your phone. Um, and then you have exactly what it is that you're, you're wanting in that scenario. Um, so that'd be a good reason. Let's say somebody is in restaurants often or in those types of environments and they're really struggling, they're frustrated. Um, that would be a great feature for that person. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I, I will say, I think based on what I know as both a hearing aid wearer and a uh, student of the industry, I guess, if I've learned a lot about hearing aids over the last few years, um, most people, from what I know, do end up with a premium uh, level uh, hearing aid. Um, many of the time, many, many people do that because they live a lifestyle where they are in restaurants or they are in uh, spaces with more background noise and that comfort matters to them, or they need some of the precision in, in programming that, that Dr. Amy talked about. Um, but I'll also say that many folks that I've uh, met and talked to have lower, uh, the, the more budget friendly uh, technology levels and with a great audiologist are still able to get fantastic outcomes. So, you know, whether your budget allows a more premium device or you need to go with a budget option, um, you're, you're certainly not uh, going to be in a bad position. And in many cases, the budget option today was the premium option just two or two or three years ago. So um, you're, you're working with a really great product uh, on any kind of mainline uh, prescription hearing aid um, out in in this in this time. 
Um, so hopefully for anyone watching, this has given you a sense for the slightly confusing, slightly frustrating world of hearing technology levels. Um, I say that based on my personal experience. If you want more information or you want to see kind of how these hearing aids compare side by side across brands, you can go to soundly.com. We have all that information organized for you. Dr. Amy, thank you for your insights. It's been incredibly helpful. Um, and to you, the viewer, we wish you luck with your search. Thank you.